a week. It's a beautiful sunny day um, in the 60s, and um, there's the Golden Gate Bridge. It's Five o'clock. We do have quorum, so I'll um, kind of start. Oh, it looks like Eden is signing in now. So, um, welcome everybody to March 10th. Uh, excuse me, the March 10th, 2020 Nantucket Conservation Commission meeting. Uh, this meeting is ha being held entirely remotely via Zoom. Uh, so, all participants are signed in on their devices or phones. Um, for participants, please remember to mute yourself if you're not talking so that you're not uh, picked up by the recording. Uh, if you do wish to speak, please uh, raise your hand either virtually or in uh, your camera screen uh, and wait to be uh, recognized by uh, me uh, and then I'll, I'll let you speak. Uh, I also wanna make sure to uh, remind everybody not to screen share your computer as anything you screen share might be captured by the recording. Uh, so uh, tonight uh, we have the following items continued uh, under notices of intent. We have the town of Nantucket at Sackage Pond continued until March 24th. Uh, we have Island Orange Group at 129 Orange Street continued until March 24th. We have SP Norwell LLC at 6, 4, excuse me, 2, 4, and 6. Mariner Way, all continued until March 24th. Uh, under amended orders of conditions, we have Phillips Trustee at 19 East Tristams Ave, continued until March 24th. And I believe that is it for our continuances tonight. Uh, so we will begin uh, this evening's meeting uh, with public comment on items not on tonight's agenda. Ashley, yeah. could I speak to the continuances? This is Paul Santos. Um, yeah, yes, is it one of your continuances? Uh, well, there's a continuance that we had requested that wasn't that you didn't list. Oh, yes, yes. Um, number 6, uh, 13 Commercial Street, LLC. Yes. We're asking for continuation, continuance on that one also. Okay, would you like to continue until March 24th? Yes, please. Perfect. So 13 Commercial Street LLC at 13 Commercial Wharf will continue until March 24th as well. And I have two more for you too that came in just right before the meeting. Um, we also have a request for Linda Loring Nature Foundation to be continued to March 24th and Kane at 12 Pond Road number 16 to be continued to the 7th of April. Okay. Um, so those items are as well continued. Um, that shortens up the agenda. <laughs> um, okay, so then we, um, let me just double check that there's no public comment on YouTube. Um, looks like we do not have public comment. Uh, so we will uh, open uh, under notices of intent uh, and we will begin I hope I'm getting this right on my computer with McCausland at 10 Smooth Hummocks Way, uh, represented by Art Gasparo. Uh, oh, excuse me. You know what? We have to vote to accept some withdrawals <laughs> first. It's going to be one of those days. Um, <laughs> we have Lower Park. Uh, I move to accept the withdrawal um, of um, Lower Parkmo Nominee Trust, 88 Parkmo Road, and Parkmo Point Realty Trust, 90 Parkmo Road. Thank you for making that motion, Ian. Mark, are you seconding? Uh, so by roll vote, Beal? Aye. Engelborg? Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding? Aye. Phillips? Aye. All right, that carries unanimously. Hopefully I'm straight now with the rest of the meeting. <laughs> um, so now we will open with McCausland at 10 Smooth Hummocks Way, represented by Art Gasparo. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. This was the um, set of beach stairs, which we discussed at your last hearing, and we continued um, waiting for a file number, which has been issued. And I'd be happy to re-go over anything or questions you may have, but I thought I think that was it. 
Thank you, Art. Are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Looks like no. I'll give a quick check and see if there's any questions or comments from the public. Also looks like not currently. Um, Jeff, do we have everything we would need to close this one? We do. All right. Uh, Art, would you like to close? Yes, please. Is there a motion to close? Motion made by Seth. Is there a second? Seconded by Mark. So by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. Maureen, you're muted. Aye. Perfect. So that carries unanimously. Um, and that moves us on to 34 Easton Realty Trust at 34 Easton Street, uh, represented by Arcus Barrow. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. This one and the next one, I think, as like the last one, were all file continued for file numbers. So this is for residential redevelopment uh, within the buffer zone to a um, coastal bank, which is essentially a bulkhead. Um, with the structure being outside of the 50 yeah. as well as within the unroll subject. the window it's too hot for me back here go ahead the coastal storm flowage and um i don't believe there was any outstanding questions or concerns but i'm available should should there be any thank you art uh, are there any questions or comments for commissioners like no uh, so we'll see if the public has any comments on 34 easton um also looks like no uh jeff do we have everything we would need to close this one yes you do uh art would you like to close yes please is there a motion to close so motion. moved Oh, I'm going to give it to Sethian. I think he, he beat you, but I'll give you the second. Um, so by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. Aye. Right, that carries unanimously. Uh, and that moves us on to Margaret Island's Land Bank at 321 Pulpis Road, represented by Arcus Barrow. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. This was uh, also um, continued for um, a file number and I believe natural heritage, which we received and um, for essentially restoring, you know, cleaning up a site um, for the land bank that they, you know, what was a residential property, and removing the structures and debris throughout structure throughout the property. Um, and I don't believe there was any outstanding questions or concerns available should you have any. Thank you, Art. Are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Looks like no. Uh, so we'll move over and see if there's any public comment. Also looks like no. Uh, Jeff, do we have everything we'd need to close this one? Yes, you do. Art, would you like to close? Yes, please. Uh, is there a motion to close? Motion made by Mark. Is there a second? Sure. Seconded by Ian. So by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. Aye. That carries unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, and that moves us on to Hell's a Poppin' Trust at 25 Willard Street, represented by David Haynes. Uh, good afternoon. Um, how is everybody today? This was continued last time. We we're uh, providing a, a provided a revised plan. Um, this is at uh, 25 Will Willard, <laughs> and. Um, we, uh, it is a, for renovation of an, ex, an existing house. We're picking it up uh, and putting a new foundation under it and actually enclosing a couple of porches. 
Um, at the last meeting, every, uh, it was agreed that we would slide the house over and uh, since we were picking it up, slide it over and try to move it as far out of the buffer zone as, or out of the 25 and the 50 as possible. This is a lot that dates back to the 40s. Uh, it was a house that was moved uh, off of Hulbert back to this location. It's been in its present condition since then. A uh, portion of the, the lawn is has been mapped. We have uh, delineated it as wetland. So what we've done since the last time is we have slid the house over as close as possible to the uh, to Willard Street that zoning will allow and slid it to the north as far as practical. Um, since the last meeting, the owner has decided that he would like to keep, there's an existing little boathouse uh, uh, garage on the property. He's sliding that up into the, as far as possible into the corner um, outside of, well outside of the 50 and almost outside of, outside of the 100, straddling the 100. Um, so we have slid the house north as far as possible. And we have uh, moved it from uh, the closest point before was 16 feet from the edge of the wetland and it's now 21, 22 feet from the edge of the wetland. Uh, we have reduced the amount of uh, structure within 25 from 322 square feet to 115 square feet, uh, making a reduction of 58% inside of the 25. Um, inside of the 50, we reduced it from 1528 to 1276, which is a 16% uh, uh, reduction. The, the property, the lot is very limited by because of the wetlands and it, it is an existing structure. We've also added on the plan a note uh, that re was reflected in the, in the notice of intent narrative, but it wasn't on the plan. Uh, that the wetland area, the, we would cease mowing that wetland area and allow it to naturalize as a wetland. So we are returning that wetland area that is an improvement. We are moving the house farther away from the, from the, uh, from the wetland, which is an improvement. We are asking for two waivers for work on a structure within, within uh, 25 and within 50, and also work within two feet of the water table we're putting in a uh, helical pier foundation um, that will be down into the water table. So there will be no dewatering permanent or temporary, uh, no displacement of the water table. The uh, foundation will be allowed to flood underneath it. Um, and that is basically it. If you have any questions, I'd be more than help, happy to answer them. Thank you, David. Uh, are there any questions or comments, uh, Mark? Thank you, Ashley. David, uh, looking at the plan, I was confused as to why you couldn't move the house farther to the north and put the parking on the south side. That would get you out of the construction of any disturbance in the 25-foot zone. Well, that it, it, it actually doesn't quite. Um, I appreciate that. The... Um, the zoning setback, it's, it's, it, that's a five foot on the side yard and it, it actually only gives us 10 feet between the property line and the corner of the house. And we were trying to, we need that to sort of work in that area. That's why we didn't slide it farther to the north. Thank you for your comment and your answer, David. Um, Seth? Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I had the same thought as Mark, but uh, now that you've explained that, I do have a question as to what's going to happen with the existing shell parking to the south. If new proposed parking is going to be at the north, I am wondering if the applicant would be amenable to uh, removing that shell parking and letting that naturalize as vegetation as well, because that's going to add uh, more benefit to the buffer additionally? Um, I, I mean, there's only two parking spaces there. Um, we, were, we, were, we could shift it slightly farther and try to get it more outside of the 50, if that would be good. We'd like to keep a, a little bit of parking in there. 
um, if we could shift it farther to the north uh, uh, to move it up out of the 50, would that be would that be more acceptable? We're happy to do something with it. What do you think, Seth? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's more acceptable, but I'm not sure what the justification is here. The, you know, the current structure has what looks like two parking spots. The new structure, you know, should have two parking spots. I don't know what the justification for having four parking spots if the, um, the structure is going to stay the same. I think that, you know... <laughs> Everyone loves can, parking. Right? I get it, but we can eliminate it. That. It, it, if if that's going to be something that's going to uh, make everybody feel better, we we're happy to eliminate that. Thank you, David. I think you know, given the constraints of this lot, any oh, yeah. <laughs> you know uh, more protection we can give to the wetland, the better. So um, I think that would definitely um, make your plan a little bit more solid. Um, Ashley, I have a comment. This is uh, Maureen. Yep, go ahead, Maureen. Um, I just I want to um, yes, given the constraints of this lot, which are are many, um, I want to say I also appreciate um, the applicant's willingness to make changes which are favorable to the wetlands and allowing that area to naturalize, um, and you know being willing to get rid of that, that kind of, uh, to us, extraneous uh, parking space. And the other movements which are made, I, uh, I appreciate it when we see an applicant who is responsive. And uh, so I just wanted to mention that. Thanks. Thank you, Maureen. Any other comments or questions from commissioners? Ian? Thank you, Madam Chair. So, um, I see that uh, on the GIS, it says this house was built in 1900, which may be, but it clearly wasn't moved there in 1900. And, um, but with the enclosure of the porches and what you're adding, um, that puts it well over our 25% um, change in habitable you know, area for any statutory protection going forward. So I would like to see that as part of our orders of condition. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, Ian. I don't know, this doesn't have um, like coast coastline that we would have to worry about coastal protection. Right, but it's in a flood zone. And so I just don't want, you know, owners going forward claiming that, you know, they're entitled to any protection whatsoever. Yeah. I hope um, you don't think I'm being too fussy, David. No, no. <laughs> uh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Uh, any other questions or comments on um, this application before we open it to the public? All right. So we'll open it up for public comment. Uh, it does not appear that we have any public comment at this point. Uh, so, Jeff, would we have everything we would need to close? Yes, you have all the required information for this one. Okay. Um, David, would you like to close? Yes, please. Is there a motion to close? So moved. Uh, second. Okay, so... Who made that motion? I did. It's Linda. Is that Linda? Okay, I didn't realize you were on for this whole one. Um, okay, so, so I'm sick. I'm sick at home, so I'm not going on video. Okay. But you've never been on video. Okay, look. <laughs> you've looked at my roof. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah. So, all right. The motion is made by Linda, seconded by Maureen. Uh, so, by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg? Aye. Erisman I. Golding? Aye. Phillips? Oh, 
Maureen, you're muted. Sorry, it sometimes mutes you without you realizing you've been muted again. So uh, yes, I. Hi, uh, Williams. Hi. Perfect. Um, all right, that carries unanimously. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Uh, so that moves us on to Nantucket Land Council at Nantucket Harbor, uh, represented by R.J. Turcotte. Thank you, Chair Erzman. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, this project was before the commission two weeks ago. This is the second eelgrass restoration site um, the Land Council is undertaking in partnership with uh, Boston University, as well as the Town of Nantucket Natural Resources Department. Um, we were waiting on a file number in Natural Heritage, and both of those things came in. Um, so if possible, we would like to close unless the commission has any further questions. And I would just like to comment again, as I did last time, that if any of you are interested in helping out and volunteering, um, shoot me a message because we will be recruiting folks to help us with this project going forward. And it's going to be a lot of work to get 20,000 eelgrass seeds this summer. So thank you. Do we get to eat the scallops that uh, propagate in that eelgrass? We're hoping to close that area off as we close the first one off, but scallops in the surrounding area in season have at them. You'll get the spillover effect from the scallops, Ian. <laughs> um, all right, so are there any questions or comments on the eelgrass planting application? Looks like no, so we'll just see if there's any public comment. Also looks like no. Um, so Jeff, oh, Mark. You're muted. Are you making a motion? I'm I moved to close the hearing. Okay. Uh, is there a second? Second. Um, all right. So by roll vote, Beal? Aye. Engelborg? Aye. Arisman, aye. Golding? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Williams? Aye. All right, that carries unanimously. Uh, thank, thank you, RJ. Uh, and that moves us on to Joseph B. Arno nominee trust at 31 Easy Street. Uh, I have to recuse, Madam Chairman. I have to recuse. I did the research on this. Okay. Uh, thank you. For that. Um, and this is represented by Jeff Blackwell. I don't know that he is on with us yet. Can you hear me, Ashley? It's Leo oh. Azabarian. Oh, yes, Leo. Yeah, I, I actually filed this application. Okay. And uh, I'll just begin to explain to you the project. Uh, simply put, is existing structure at uh, 31 Easy Street. And the owner... Uh, requested that we file a notice of intent to demo the building. Uh, there'll be no other additional work uh, at the site other than uh, removing the utilities and the structure itself and capping it. Uh, the site itself is within land subject to coastal stone flowage. It's also in state fill high lands. The structure right now doesn't presently have a chapter 91 license. Uh, so, uh, and removing it kind of gets rid of the onus of that not having a license for the structure itself. Uh, we're also to buffer to uh, Coastal Beach and Coastal Bank to the uh, southeast, which is the uh, bulkhead that runs along the property of Judson. Uh, simply put, uh, there's an existing plank fence between the Steamship Authority property and this property. And we, we thought that would be a good uh, construction barrier. But at the time, and as you can see from the uh, size of the parcel, that it's quite small. So obviously there's gonna be a lot of work that has to be done both from Easy Street and Steamboat Wharf. Uh, speaking to one of the local contractors who 
specialize in removing uh, uh, these type of structures. He said it'd take about a day to do it. And uh, so obviously they'll have a, have a street closing or it has to be done in off hours or whatever, but uh, they said they could get in there and get that structure out of there within a day, probably another day to bring in fill, cap it, seed it, uh, and uh, make sure the site is secure. I would imagine there'll be construction fences in the long Broad Street and uh, Easy Street as well. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to uh, answer them. Thank you, Leo. Uh, so are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Um, this is Maureen. I, I have a question. Yes, Maureen, go ahead. Um, so, Lee, I just I wanted to be clear. So, this is going to be removed. Um, is what is the and seated? So, is the plan that this will remain open? I'm I'm sorry if that that may have been clear, but I didn't I I couldn't find what the future of the the uh, plot is intended to be. Well, I think there'll be two uh, two issues going on here. I think town uh, as we did with. Uh, uh, the corner of Francis and Washington, Washington and Orange. Uh, mm -hmm. Union Street, excuse me, is uh, probably a possible go to the town of Nantucket uh, to put a corner rounding in there. As you could tell, trailer tractor trailer trucks have to veer over to the west on Easy Street to make it a corner. And then they go into the opposite lane, uh, vehicles leaving the steamship. So they'll probably, most likely, it's outside our purview, but the town takes title to it or the land bank or whoever ends up with the property of both. Uh, I think the corner rounding will be put in there as well as a, probably a pocket park, uh, hopefully to join uh, the park uh, going towards the east, uh, the 21 east street, which the land bank on. But I, I don't know of any firm uh, commitments by anybody at this stage, but there has been talk about the town acquiring at least a corner rounding for a sidewalk. Um, thank you. If I may have a, a follow-up, um, Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead, Maureen. Um, so, because I, I recognize that the future building is is not on the plate yet, so I just wanted to make sure that that I was clear on that. Um, but what you're doing now is is doing simply the elimination of the building, which is what which is in our purview. So. That's all we have to worry about at this point in time. So I'm just confirming that. So that that's where we are, Arthur. That, that's correct. It's strictly for okay. the demolition capping. Okay, great. Thank you. Great. And Mark, had I seen your hand up? Making that up. Um, so I know I have a question about this because of the um, close proximity to the harbor. Um, the, the house next door to where I live was just torn down and I was surprised how much dust and like particulates ended up like at my house and in my dog's outside water bowl. And I just didn't know maybe this is a better question for Jeff, but if we needed to condition this to happen like on a, on a wind direction, that's not like blowing all this stuff out into the Harbor or how uh, kind of that, plays into it because again I was surprised by the amount of particulates that um, were floating around the day that the house was torn down behind me. So I think to answer that I mean we could certainly try to condition it some way to accommodate that I mean I might throw it out to the applicant for you know what measures they're going to have in place to minimize things leaving that site or thoughts on that I mean I know they're I think the corner in question is pretty small because there's another house there as well, but I think that's a point well taken, but I don't know if Leo has any insights to how they're planning on doing that to try to minimize um, debris of dust leaving that site. I think as part of the condition that a demolition protocol be submitted to the planning, uh, planning staff or the staff at the commission office, and that uh, once we find out who the contractor is, sit down with them and determine the protocol and uh, 
uh, how we would handle that. And we would make suggestions as well. So that could all be uh, part of the order conditions that a demolition protocol be submitted prior to the demolition. Okay, Th thank you for that information. Uh, Mark? Thank you, Ashley. I, uh, Leo, I would encourage the, uh, our order of conditions to maybe include a reference to using water on the site when they're demolishing that is very effective in keeping dust and debris down. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Seth? Thank you, Madam Chair, and um, thank you, Leo, for saying that you'll provide a demolition protocol. I think that, in my opinion, is fine. We just need to ensure that you know, the applicant is using appropriate erosion and sedimentation controls. And, um, you know, once we get that, staff or the commission can look at it and say, this looks good or not. And we need to add additional things in and maybe just in the order conditions as a last resort, um, say that if any particulate is um, observed entering the harbor, uh, demolition should be stopped until uh, alternative protocols can be established. Thank you, Seth. Uh, Ian? Thank you, Madam Chair. So, Leo, I have a question on the same lines. Would it be feasible to um, construct sort of one of those, the, I'm not quite sure what they're called, but they're, you often see them around uh, you know, urban golf ranges, or um, they're sort of made, they're green, and they're a sort of screen that keeps down the wind and the like. Would that be feasible to erect uh, along the two sides of the lot? I think that is feasible. In other words, uh, they'll most likely put up uh, temporary construction fencing anyways to keep the public out, uh, but you can also adhere uh, to that uh, screening. Uh, if you recall when the Dreamland was constructed, uh, it was encircled, the whole site was encircled uh, with that green mesh to keep a lot of the dust out. So it is feasible to do it. And uh, it's a good recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, any other questions or comments? Great, so we'll open it up to the public. Oh, Ashley, excuse me, I just yep. have a quick comment. And yep. Leo, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I called you Art. Uh, it's hard to keep track of who you're talking to when it's just on the phone. I apologize. Apology accepted. <laughs> He's probably been called worse, Maureen. I think, me, I think oh. we, just, we just lost Maureen, oh. actually. <laughs> um, so she'll probably be calling back in. Um, does not look like we have any public comment on this one. Um, I don't know how long it takes on a phone to realize you've been kicked out of Zoom. So I don't know that Maureen will be coming back for this one. Um, so Jeff, do we have everything we would need to close? Yes, you do. Uh, Leo, would you like to close? Yes, I would, thank you. Is there a motion to close? Motion made by Seth. Is there a second? Seconded by Mark. So by roll vote, Beal? Aye. Engelborg? Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding? Aye. All right, so that uh, carries with Commissioner Williams recused uh, and we lost Commissioner Phil Phillips at the end of that one. Um, thank you, Leo. You're welcome, thank you. Uh, that moves us on to Augustine at 13 Woodbury Lane, represented by Paul Santos. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, Paul Santos on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this is a notice of intent for uh, some reconstruction work in the backyard of an existing dwelling located at 13 Woodbury Lane. Uh, the wetland I'm sorry, the resource area is an offsite wetland um, to the west of the property. Um, this actually is a property that is abutting uh, the home 
that was recently destroyed by the, the gas explosion and um, actually was currently before you for some uh, reconstruction work. Um, the site is previously fully developed with a residential home, uh, an existing garage studio, a porch that comes out into a back area, a lawn area um, that has an existing patio. Uh, wetland is shown on the plan um, that was uh, delineated by um, Brian Madden at LVC. It was um, walked and verified by Jeff Carlson at the time uh, that the abutter to the north application was before you a few meetings back. Um, what we're proposing to do is just expand an existing patio and add a fire pit um, at the back side of the existing dwelling. This occurs outside uh, of the 25 foot no disturb and uh, is within the 25 to 50 foot um, no build. It's a uh, dry blade uh, step patio. Um, and again, it's a, a replacement of the one that's there, but it is being expanded. Uh, the remainder of the area will be returned to, uh, and it's an existing lawn. There's a low landscape retaining wall and there's plantings along uh, the property line, both to the west and to the north. Um, area is not mapped um, under the Mass Endangered Species Act. It's not located within a flood zone. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have. Thank you, Paul. Uh, are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Uh, Seth? Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Paul. I have concerns over the proposed plant schedule. I see uh, several plants on there. Well, most of the plants proposed are non-native species. Uh, I don't think there's any native species except for a few cultivars of native species. Uh, and some of the plants proposed on there, uh, although they're not currently listed in Massachusetts as invasive, are listed in invasive as invasive in other New England states. Um, including Panacetum allopecoroides, that's the fountain grass, um, sweet autumn clematis, uh, the privet. You know, there's several species on here that are significant cause for concern that we should really not be planting anywhere on Nantucket, but definitely not within wetland resource areas or their associated buffer zones. Um, uh Okay, if I could. So we um, submitted with the application also a, um, a landscape plan um, that was done by uh, Ahern, um, Mirka Ahern. Um, so I'm happy to, I mean, the body of the application obviously would be the fire pit and the patio, but I'm happy to defer to the fact that um, the plantings would be either approved through staff or um, submitted in a revised plan. Happy to proceed any which way with it, the um, commission would um, like to proceed. So, thank, thank you, Paul. Um, Seth, go ahead. Yeah, my suggestion would just to say that we, you know, approve the, um, the, you know, the, the patio and the fire pit, but we don't approve the landscape schedule and the and a landscape schedule of native plants needs to be submitted before the project can start construction. Um, in that case, then I'd probably want, so I wouldn't have to come back as an amended, if it could be done as a minor mod, I wouldn't have an issue with doing that. Um, that's up to Jeff. If you think I could do the minor mod on that or just continue um, and come back and just approve this all in one, in one swoop would probably be, I assume the better way to do it. Jeff, what do you think? Yeah, I think you could do the landscape plan as a minor mod, but I tend to agree that if just for ease, if you brought it back with the revised schedule, that's probably the, the cleanest way to do it. Yeah, and then the next the next meeting is the 24th. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, so I, I think that's the way to, to go. That I'd be happy to do that. And then uh, you know, prior to that meeting, provide the uh, an updated landscape plan, and then you'd have time to review that. Thank, thank you, Paul. Um, I definitely 
notice some of those um, plants that Seth mentioned as well. So I'm, I'm glad you're willing to revise that. Um, any other questions or comments from commissioners? Um, Ashley, I have one, it's Maureen, and I'm sorry I, I uh, fell off the call. Hopefully I will be on now to the end. Um, the, um, I guess I, we keep seeing this uh, phenomenon of, of things that were put, you know, built in the no build before that concept existed. And then people come in again to put something new in the no build. And, um, and I just, that, that's simply distressing to me. Um, and I see the addition, I, I can't see how adding a fire pit and a gas line and an electric line is helpful to the resource area. Um, and so I'm not, um, we have this often and I would just like to register my concern about this trend that if something had been already disturbed, um, it is it's very much a trend to keep it disturbed, put something new on it to keep it disturbed. And I wish that that trend did not exist. So that I'm registering my objection to this. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. If I just could, more, Ashley. Um, yes, go ahead, Paul. So, so Maureen, there's no waivers being requested for this. The, uh, the patio is an allowed, typically under new construction, the, the dry laid patios are allowed within the 50. I mean, my opinion is that's gonna change when the regulations change, but as of right now, this is what they're asking for now is, is not, we're not asking for any um, new building within the 50. Um, it's what we're asking for is um, currently allowed uh, within that 25 to 50. So. Um, may, may I respond, Madam Chair? And uh, yes, Maureen, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, and, and uh, thank you, Paul. Um, I appreciate, I'm, I'm glad you reminded me of that. And I guess it is, um, perhaps it is, um, you know, I am waiting for the change in the regulations. And also fire pits are um, um, to me, that's a, a something that is uh, certainly in fashion now and I wish it weren't. And so I'm just giving my own old fashioned opinion, I guess, about that. Um, but it, it's, uh, it's a trend that I think, along with a lot of other things, is 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 bothersome. But I appreciate what you said, and and so I still I have a philosophical objection, but not a um, not a legal one. But and thank you, I appreciate thank, the info. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you. Um, any other questions or comments before I open it up to the public? Uh, Seth. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I guess we do need some details about what the proposed fire pit is going to be. If it's going to be a built up um, thing with like stones extending above the ground, that is possibly a structure. But I don't know, Paul, what do you have in mind? Um, I'm going to look at the, the detail sheet. It is just a, it's a, it's a, it is a built up, it's, it's in the patio, a, just a kind of a, you know, landscape type of wall around it. And it's a gas fired fire pit is what it is. So. Um, that does sign, sound borderline structural under our, um, under our regs, Paul. Um, so, uh, Seth? Yeah, yeah, with respect. I mean, at a previous meeting not too long ago, we you know, decided that a freestanding pile of stones was a structure. Um, this is the same thing. It just also 
is capable of having fire within it. I get it's within an existing patio, but that doesn't really change, you know, if it was put on the lawn or on the patio. Uh, you know, I think it sounds like a structure to me. I think there's ways to make a fire pit that's not a structure, definitely. But I think the one being proposed sounds structural. Well, I mean, I think at the end of the day, I mean, I'll read the definition of structure. It's, I think we have to go based on what it, what it says. A combination of materials assembled at a fixed location to give support or shelter, such as a building, framework, retaining wall, platform, bin, radio, antenna mast, or the like. The term structure may also be applied to appurtenances that are constructed of impervious surfaces, such as, but not limited to swimming pools, recreational playing courts, roads, parking areas, parking lots, driveways, et cetera, drainage basins, split rail fences, septic tanks, subsurface propane tanks, and signs are not structures. The word structure shall be construed with a context required as though followed by the words or part thereof. Um, I don't think we fall anywhere within that. But that's my opinion. Um, so. um, yeah, I think, again, get Given the driveway pile of rocks that Seth just described from a few meetings ago, um, I do think that the stone wall around the fire pit seems very similar structurally to me. Um, so I do think maybe we need some clear details of what that fire pit's going to look like, I guess, so that next meeting we can uh, really determine if this is structural. Uh, Seth? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. And I don't want to engage in too much back and forth or get into a grammatical argument, but in what Paul just read, you know, it says a pertinence. Um, you know, pertinence is an accessory associated with a particular activity or style of living, according to Google and uh, constructed of impervious surfaces. So it depends, you know, how this stone is laid out. It's, we need to know before we, we can move forward. Thank you, um, Seth. Uh, Paul, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna continue. I'm happy to, I'm not gonna argue the, the definition of structure. Um, I will just basically say that I guess the, the patio, it's falling with an area that's um, quite honestly, it's in the area that the existing patio already exists. Um, whether that's gas fired or if I brought in a portable fire pit or a, one of these bins that you can light a fire in and put it in the middle of a patio and and sit around, does does that really have any effect on the resource area? Um, whether it's if it was a portable one that I could come in there and stick in there and it wasn't gas fired and I can throw some logs in there and light it. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you're sitting on a patio with a with a fire pit in the middle. What is the what is the effect of that on a resource on the resource area? So, but we'll leave it at that, and we'll uh, I won't belabor this point any longer tonight. We're coming back with the landscape, and we'll see you on the 24th if that's if there isn't any other questions. Thank you, Paul. I, I don't see any uh, questions from the public. So if, if commissioners don't have any other questions or comments, um, then this will continue until March 24th. But I want to make sure we give everything to Paul now. <laughs> right. Thank you. Then, oh, Ian? I would just, we've had this discussion before. And, you know, as part of that, it says anything that's impervious, which it clearly is. And so um, my sympathies lie with my fellow commissioners who've brought this up going forward. So right. I'm going to look at the previous fire pit. How's that? <laughs> thank, thank you, Paul. You have two weeks to get your design ready for us. <laughs> Outside the box. We'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> see you March 24th. Thank you, Paul. I'll never try and match wits with you, Paul. <laughs> All right, so that moves us on to 9B Crow's Nest LLC at 9B Crow's Nest Way, represented by Brian Madden. I have to accuse from this. I did the research over a year ago, but I, it's, I just don't want to take any chances. All right, uh, 
Thank you very much, uh, Brian Madden from LEC Environmental. Um, so, uh, Jeff, maybe if you start with the, the other plan. Uh, thanks, appreciate it. Um, so the proposed project is to relocate and reconstruct the existing uh, dwelling on um, the northerly portion of this site, uh, 9B Crow's Nest Way. Uh, resource areas on the subject parcel include a bordering vegetated wetland system uh, within the westerly northwesterly portion of the site um, that extends off site and is, is a little pocket wetland, but there are culverts underneath Crow's Nest Way that connect to the larger BVW system to the west. Uh, the easterly portion of the property is occupied by Coastal Dune. Uh, further out is Coastal Beach. Uh, in the flood zone, uh, which is a velocity zone 10, uh, extends through the westerly uh, edge of the existing dwelling. And so the majority of the existing structure is uh, within the flood zone. Uh, the existing dwelling occurs at the landward edge of uh, the coastal dune. Uh, it is supported currently by a concrete crawl space foundation to the majority of its footprint. And so the intent of this project is to relocate the dwelling as far back away outside of the dune as possible. Um, you know, it's complicated by the fact that there's the boring vegetated wetland system to the west. Um, and the northerly lot line uh, for side yard setbacks. Currently, the structure is a non-conforming um, structure. Uh, it's right up against the northerly property line. Um, and so the proposed relocated footprint, which you can see outlined in orange here, shifts it landward uh, to the southwest. So closer towards the driveway, and out into existing lawn areas um, between the dwelling and the BVW system itself. Um, so we're trying to balance those, those resource areas and basically remove structure from uh, the coastal dune and flood zone. Uh, the structure will be reconstructed uh, to be flood zone compliant. So that will mean, uh, because it is still partially or mostly within the flood zone, velocity zone, that will be pile supported. Uh, that gives the opportunity to enhance uh, dune function, uh, the ability of the dune to migrate laterally or um, you know, landward. Um, we are proposing to uh, handle roof runoff out within the existing lawn area uh, via dry well, stone infiltration trenches, shallow subsurface infiltration systems, a uh, combination uh, thereof. Uh, the existing septic system is uh, east of the existing structure within the dune system. Uh, there's a sand path that occurs, um, occurs over the, the existing leach footprint. Uh, the, the septic system is proposed to be upgraded to an IA system uh, within the dune and all temporary impacts associated with that installation would be restored uh, in kind. So form, volume, and vegetation would be restored um, uh, back to pre-existing conditions. Um, in summary, this structure, and Jeff, maybe if you had toggle down to the next um, sheet. So that was the overlay. This is, um, shows the existing footprint in orange um, and the restoration areas. So shifting it further landward to the southwest allows for uh, removing 518 square feet of structure within the coastal dune itself. And under existing conditions, there are some denuded areas immediately abutting the structure that we're proposing to restore. That's that uh, highlighted red area uh, that totals 884 square feet of restoration, dune restoration. Um, the uh, 
structural reduction in the flood zone is 461 square feet. Um, the structural reduction overall uh, amounts to 60 square feet. Uh, but again, it is decreasing within what I view as the, the two critical resource areas um, affecting the dwelling being coastal dune in the flood zone. Uh, again, we are elevating on um, pile supports um, and we are proposing to also restore a portion of the buffer zone to the bordering vegetated wetland system that's currently occupied by lawn. Uh, that's the green area that's 1,110 square feet. Um, and basically, um, you know, hopefully, you know, the work and restoration, um, you know, will be viewed for, you know, improvements over existing conditions. And we've requested waivers for this. Obviously, um, you know, unique set of circumstances here, but, um, you know, we, we took a, a long, hard look at trying to minimize and reduce the structural footprint in these resource areas and, and uh, restore as much as, as, as we can. So um, I think overall it'll be at a vast improvement over existing conditions. And um, I'd be happy to answer any questions and or um, we also have uh, some other folks on the line that could, could jump in as well. Thank you, Brian. Uh, are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Uh, Ian? Thank you, Madam Chair. So, Brian, you said on this, on the before, the before and after, it says 1,457 plus or minus square feet for the footprint. Yep. And are you saying the footprint is being reduced? Yeah. So, um, which is not delineated as far as I can see on the plan, on the second plan, or is my eyesight fading? Um, I, we can give you a further breakdown. I, I you know, um, so just to clarify that, um, and thanks for the question. So the total square footage structural footprint of house that's on the concrete crawl space plus the decking under existing conditions in comparison to uh, the proposed structure on pilings and decking. There is a small deck area on the northerly portion of the, the dwelling. Comparing those two structural elements, it's a 60 square foot reduction. Um, so uh, Madam Chair, if I may, um, I'd be happier to actually see the the drawings of what it's going to look like and something that's a lot more specific than just moving and reconstruction as I'm having a hard time grasping what it's really going to look like. Um, Thank you, Ian. Um, Lisa Botticelli? Yeah, did you want me to speak to that, Brian? Yeah, sure, Lisa, if you could. I can, I can just tell you at this state, we have not gone to the Historic District Commission yet. We can certainly bring a, a floor plan to be more specific, but we don't have uh, massing or the actual exterior appearance of the building um, approved by anybody yet. I think the concern was really, it's the carpet for the horse, what do you do first? But we have a concept in terms of how we are removing decks and hoping to, um, we work the building a little bit to make it more feasible for um, the family that owns it. Thank you, Lisa. And um, I, I would, I would like to condition this if we approve it on uh, a final approval of the of the final HDC drawings, because I think especially there, it's very important what it looks like in the final mm -hmm. analysis and. Um, so we, we don't really have a handle on this. So it would be a great help to see preliminary drawings. And um, if the HDC approves something that is very substantially different, I'd like to see what they've approved before we sign off on it. Okay. I mean, I certainly have drawings that I could either share tonight yeah. or we can submit for if it's continued. I, speaking for myself, I prefer that they were submitted. Um, okay. And thank you for offering um, to provide them. No problem. Yeah, just to, sorry to interject on, on two points. Um, so we are 
portion of the proposed work activity is within uh, priority estimated habitat. So we, we, we will be continuing um, uh, to allow for natural heritage to provide that determination letter. And then also building on what Lisa said for, you know, the cart and the horse situation here. Right. So we haven't yet uh, filed with Board of Health either uh, for the septic upgrade. Um, and this was our first stop in the in the chain of priorities. I, I understand that, excuse me, that the, the cart and the horse can often have difficulty <laughs> deciding which is gonna go first, so. All right, uh, any other questions or comments on this application? Looks like no, so we'll see if there's any uh, comments or questions from the public. Also looks like no. Um, so Brian, since we are waiting on heritage and um, maybe some um, better details on the house, uh, would you like to continue for two weeks until March 24th? Yeah, if um, the commission does have anything else to relay at this point, yeah, we'll certainly continue uh, for two weeks, please. Okay, um, so we will continue. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And that moves us on to Meyer at 307 Pulpis Road, represented by Art Gasparo. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm before you tonight with a notice of intent application for residential redevelopment within the buffer zone to bordering and isolated vegetated wetlands. Um, the project includes alterations to an existing structure, uh, relocation, uh, actually removal and construction of a new garage, construction of a new structure, um, single family dwelling within the buffer zone um, outside of the 50, but within the 100. Construction of a swimming pool, which is outside of the 100 and outside the jurisdiction of the commission, but we have shown it. We have also filed uh, at the same time with Natural Heritage for this project. And then um, reconstruction, uh, actually replacement of an existing structure on the south end of the property. Though I will note that on the plan, I had a new foundation noted and the, the intent is that the uh, structure would go on the existing foundation. Um, so we would provide, we will end up having to continue ultimately for natural heritage, but I'd like to get the feedback of the commission and I would provide a revised plan that address that one note. There's also landscaping. Again, most of this site has been, um, uh, you know, historically disturbed as part of a, um, or, or maintained, excuse me, as residential use. I included with the application for comparison, the um, 1998 and, um, uh, 2019 aerial photos, just so that you could see that uh, it's been continuously maintained. I know that doesn't go all the way back to the, before the wetland regulations, but those are sort of the best aerials available on the GIS that I thought could give you a, a sense of, um, you know, how this property has uh, has been maintained. And the, the, sept, the site is served by an existing on-site septic system, which is um, innovative alternative technology. There is um, uh, a spa also sort of a um, at grade, uh, excuse me, um, on grade type of a, uh, a hot tub or spa, if you would, uh, again, outside of the 50, but within the 100 foot buffer zone. We're proposing to relocate a, um, uh, the existing driveway which is located within the 25 foot buffer zone and move that uh, closer to the 50 foot buffer zone. And then we would replant that driveway. So we see that as a, a long-term net benefit and overall improvement. We are requesting a waiver for the separation distance of the uh, footings to estimated seasonal high groundwater. The uh, applicant has gone with a partial crawl space foundation and a, and a partial full foundation under the existing structure. We have shown a dewatering area, which would be uh, outside of the, um, uh, the buffer zone completely. So I don't believe there'd be any adverse effect or impact on the uh, interest provided, uh, protected by the, by the commission as a result of um, the, the granting of that waiver. The um, full depth foundation provides more um, uh, some more usable area for the applicants, as well as 
um, ease of having mechanicals uh, in, in the basement. And then there is some uh, associated landscaping shown, stepping stones, and uh, we've included both a landscape plan and a um, survey plan with the structures. So there is a, a, a fairly lot going on on the site. Um, they have, um, I have had discussions with the landscape designer throughout and the importance of uh, using native species. And um, they've included some details on, on their plan with respect to uh, how the um, uh, driveway would be um, uh, restored. And again, we would be happy to, uh, to take any questions, comments, or concerns that you may have with the application. Thank you. Thank you, Art. Uh, are there any questions or comments from Commissioner Seth? Thank you, Madam Chair. Regarding the separation to high groundwater, are any of the structures going to meet that two foot separation? Um, would it just be the single family residence that's not meeting that or is the garage and the other structure and the pool all not meeting that? Through you, Madam Chair. Yes. So um, the, the garage would meet it because it's going to be a slab on grade. Um, the existing structure um, that we are um, uh, putting a uh, addition on would, would require the waiver. The proposed structure would require the waiver and the pool is outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. And the other structure to the south that exists would go on the existing foundation, which is also, I believe, a slab. Great. Thank you, Art. Are there any other questions uh, or comments from commissioners? Uh, Ian? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I think Seth's question was a highly pertinent one. And we've certainly, we've uh, denied designs in the past that um, we felt could be designed differently so that they didn't have to request a waiver. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Um, I am happy to see at least that the pool is, um, you know, outside of jurisdiction and not requiring the waiver because that's definitely been a hold up in the past. Um, but uh, I agree, we've been looking much more closely at the separation of ground groundwater. Um, any other questions or comments from commissioners? I have a question or a comment. Uh, yep, go ahead, Linda. I've been on this property and I think, I don't know if you guys did it on Monday, I was tied up. Did you guys go to the property in the site visits or we didn't do one this week? Weather was just great. Um, I was at the town workshop, so oh, that's I was right. Two days of we did not go there. I think it'd be advantageous for you guys to actually take a site visit on the next site visit, go around next week or two weeks from now, to actually look at the site. It was, uh, quite effective when I went out there. Um, what do you mean by quite affected, Linda? It's an interesting site um, where it's cleared already and then where it drops off in the back and where the existing structures are and the moving of the one structure out of the, out of the wetland area. I think it's just a, it's a complicated site and I think it might work well if you just sort of went and took a look at it. Th thank you for the suggestion, it's definitely dynamic out there being bordered by the bogs and then all the um, natural wetlands. Um, so that's a good suggestion. Um, any other comments or questions, Mark? Yes, thank you, Ashley. Um, through you to, to Arthur, um, to Art. Um, Art, do homeowners ever consider doing a slab on grade construction for a house uh, to eliminate all the problems with dealing with groundwater? Uh, go ahead, Art. Through you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, the real challenge with that is your mechanicals, you know, and um, how you are able to incorporate, um, you know, the piping that serves your, you know, both your HVAC units, your, um, uh, you know, bathroom waste piping. I'm not saying that it, it can't be done, but it's a, it's a much more challenging method of construction. And the other is that you have building codes that require um, four feet of cover over your footings. 
So the way around that, as you know, we've brought to you alternative designs, um, our engineered type slabs so it's not that like you're going to then come in with a still have just a four inch slab usually they're quite thickened on the end you know um they're they're still deeper on the end you have to provide um frost heave protection for any kind of a, a structural support as, as a foundation so um i think there's both of those reasons that um you know at a minimum you really you know a, a, a crawl space with a frost wall um, is, um, you know, really required if, if you will, or the, or the, the, um, best way to be able to construct a house and provide, um, you know, some mechanicals at the mechan room for mechanicals and, um, required, uh, appurtenances, if you will, and waste piping and that. And even with that, um, sometimes you'll see that a lot of times you'll see that a crawl space even is, uh, a challenge for mechanicals and it's, it's much um, uh, easier and to facilitate those if you're able to have at least some area that has full depth uh, foundation, you know, in terms of whether it's uh, boilers, um, air handlers, anything of, of those, you know, types of types of things. And then, you know, getting the waste pipes out from, you know, there's some drop that has to happen in the plumbing, but under the toilets and, um, that sort of stuff, all of which you're able to both install and maintain if you have at least a, a crawl space with a rat slab that you can get underneath there. Uh, so those are all the, the reasons really that, you know, for a, a residential type of a structure. Um, and then and then you have the issues, of course, of, of simply weatherproofing. And, you know, if you're if you're right at grade and you're having essentially um, uh, the sleep, you know, your joists would be like a sleeper type of a system on top of a, uh, a slab, um, you know, concerns with moisture and things of that nature that that go into into that. So uh, I would say at least a crawl space is is really required for a residential structure, typically. Thank you for that explanation, Art. Uh, Maureen, and then I'll go to you, Ian. Um, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so um, living in a house with just a crawl space and having most of the mechanicals distributed around the outside of the house, um, it, you know, I always look at people with who have um, essentially basements with great envy. Um, what I'm wondering about here is is the amount of the, um, and it's, it's a struct, it may be a structural question as well, but are there parts of this house that do not need to have, um, you know, as much of what I still think of as a, as a basement, you know, a place for the mechanicals, um, you know, is, is all that space necessary? And I wasn't quite sure from looking at the, at the uh, plan um, you know, how much of those spaces are actually, um, uh, you know, how much are vital for mechanicals and how much is nice to have the, the, you know, laundry room down there or other things like that, that, that could be, you know, in, at, where the structure wouldn't have to have, um, you know, the, the helical, uh, the piers, you know, under the entire structure or is, having half and half or partly one, partly the other, is that even feasible? Because I'm just looking for a way to minimize the amount of uh, impact with groundwater, um, but allow some, and I'm not sure if that's possible. Thank you, Maureen. Uh, Art, do you wanna take that? Sure, we included um, in, the, um, in, in the application materials, um, it's sheet A.10, which does show the comparison for the crawl space and the full basement. And it's certainly more than just the mechanicals. Uh, it's so that they could have a staircase to get down there to get to them. And there is some usable area. They went to about a half and half. Uh, I would just roughly estimate in terms of the, the house as mm -hmm. full basement versus crawl space. They are trying to also gain some usable space in that area. Again, 
partially also on the um, basis that, um, you know, the dewatering that would be associated with um, uh, the project would be able to be on this particular site located completely outside of the buffer zone. I think if we get back to uh -huh. the protected interests related to the, the waiver, um, that, um, you know, there's not a concern as I see it, that any kind of dewatering activities um, on a site that has the ability to uh, have a discharge at, at, at outside of the buffer zone is um, going to have an adverse impact or effect on the um, uh, on the resource areas. And in terms of, and I know this is a <clears throat> somewhat subjective and has been discussion by the commission, in terms of a um, intercept, if you will, of the of the groundwater for this volume, I think that. Uh, again, I don't see uh, an adverse effect or impact by having a portion of a, a foundation that actually is in the groundwater, but I know that some of you may differ with that opinion. Thank you, Art. Um, Ian? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. So, Art, did you refer to um, the architectural drawing A3.0? Uh, 1.0, sir. Oh, 1.0. Okay, because I'm looking at them right now. And um, so could you tell us which has, because on three, it looks on uh, 3.1 that it has a full basement for well over half the size of the building. And so perhaps I'm reading it wrong. So on 1.0, could you put it on the screen and show us what is the full foundation ah. for the full basement? Is that okay? I'm sure I'm happy to. It's in, it should be in the, um, but I'm, I'm certainly happy to do that. Well, I've got it and it looks oh. like, yeah. Yeah. So, this is, so is that all full foundation? The Yes. The cross hatched area is full and the um, other wings, if you will, are crawl space. That's what I was referring to at about oh, yeah. roughly, maybe it's 60, 40 percent. Yeah. So it, it doesn't come out nearly as clearly um, on this my a, iPad. Okay. Or, but anyway, um, so that looks far more than is necessary for vital mechanicals or um, from my non-architectural perspective. Uh, agreed. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so, I think um, Art uh, said they're gonna use some of it for space too. Yeah, so. Um, yeah. All right, Seth. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I am of the opinion that having a footing um, that's constantly interacting with the groundwater can be problematic. And especially if it's, you know, diverting um, subsurface flow at a direction or speed that it wouldn't have been doing beforehand. I don't know if this will be the case, but I think it needs to be looked at where the full basement is and where the uh, crawl space is and making sure we're not inadvertently uh, channel creating any channels that would, you know, direct flow more specifically towards the wetland. Um, just that's an engineering thing, but just uh, look at that and, and uh, make sure because I think there's opportunities to you know change the orientation if needed but i don't want it to act as a funnel to have more subsurface flow being directed straight towards the wetland thank you seth that's a good point um, any other questions or comments from commissioners mark thank, thank you uh, actually i, I would encourage art that you consider talking over with your um with your homeowner the idea of a, of a crawl space i think it's going to be uh, eight foot or nine foot down into our groundwater i think it's going in that site is going to be um i think uh, disruptive and to the water flow and i think uh, you should consider it's sort of an ideal spot for a crawl space and the owner may not like losing that space but uh he's picking a spot that is is challenging for sure uh, and that will be my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, any other questions or comments, Maureen? Uh, 
Yes. Sorry, working on the phone is is hard. Um, so, um, yeah, and and thank you, Art, for all that information. Um, because I, looking at those the architectural drawings, I did not notice with the tiny print that you know the call, crawl space versus uh, basement were uh, delineated. So I guess we would be, I would be looking for the minimal amount of full basement um, for the reasons um, that Seth and, and Mark um, both mentioned and maybe Ian as well. Um, because it's, to me, it's a luxury in that kind of area where the groundwater is so uh, close and that minimizing the full basement for, um, uh, you know, needed mechanicals and a, you know, access, a stairway access would seem to me to make more sense. Um, the house is um, not small. And um, so I think there is there, I would guess there is room to at least reduce that. Um, and, and I certainly, if they, if you're, if the, uh, applicant came back and said, you know, all right, we'll, we'll deal with a, um, a slab instead. Um, you know, like I said, it's, it's crawl spaces are not, um, they're not wonderful, but it is possible to live without one. So um, I think we, I would like to see some more um, push in that regard from this applicant. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Uh, any other questions or comments from commissioners? It's like, no, so we'll see if there's any public comment. No, there's not any public comment at this point. Um, so Art, go ahead. Could I please continue to the meeting on the 24th? Yes, um, so this will continue until March 24th. Thank you, Art. Thank you. Uh, and that moves us on to amended orders of conditions. We have EPR RGH LLC at 119 Eel Point Road, represented by Paul Santos. And Seth, are you off this one? Yes, recused. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. On behalf of the uh, property owner EPR RGH LLC, uh, this is a amended order of conditions for a property that's been before you a few times um, with regard to uh, construction of a uh, new dwelling um, and associated outbuilding in a pool within uh, at 119 Eel Point Road. The actual, all of the structures actually on the site, the pool, the dwelling, the second dwelling septic system are all actually um, over outside of your jurisdiction. Um, the only order of conditions that we had before you was the uh, working um, of, a, of a rear uh, lawn area, which occurred um, outside of the 25 foot no disturb to a coastal bank. Um, and that was the only uh, order that we currently have um, all the other site improvements have been kept outside of your jurisdiction, closer to Eel Point Road. The application before you tonight is to uh, construct a set of aluminum beach stairs to gain access from uh, the site itself um, to the beach. We've shown those in, the, in an area that's in red on your plan. Um, we've put those in an area where it's the least amount of, of slope from the top of the uh, bank area uh, to, the, to the beach and while still maintaining the zoning, uh, proper zoning setback um, of 15 feet from the property line. Um, we are asking to construct a um, small wooden boardwalk or platform at the top to attach the aluminum stairs to it. More than likely, we'd probably keep these because of the size of the, the slope, we'd keep the majority of the aluminum stairs in place on a yearly basis and would have the last section or have a smaller section at the very end, which would be removed, which would be removed seasonally. Um, the aluminum stairs uh, come, I believe, in approximately 
20 foot length. So the, the larger length, you can get them as small as 10. And I think the intent would be to put a few 20 foot sections as needed. And then at the end would be the, the, the piece that would be removed. Um, typically these are put in hand dug uh, with helical, with a helical um, anchor into the, into the bank. And then the aluminum stairs are then um, attached in that particular manner. Um, the area itself um, here, uh, the grade is fairly level at the, um, the back of the site. Um, so there'd be a plateau uh, or, a, or a, at least a three foot wide wooden platform that would gain access to the stairs. And then you'd have the stairway, it's, you'd have the stair itself. Um, down to the end. Uh, this area typically in the past has been um, fenced and protected for shorebirds. We've stayed, um, again, we've stayed away from the area that we've had previous um, indication of the shorebird um, locations on this particular property. I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that the board may have. Thank you, Paul. Uh, are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Uh, Ian? Thank you, Madam Chair. So, Paul, without a cross section, it's sort of difficult to see the scale and the disturbance. And uh, I assume it's going to have railings. So I'm, I'm curious as to what it's going to look like. Um, OK. Um, did we did we not include in there, uh, Ian, the the standard? You see the railings from the the cut sheet. I'm assuming. No, I maybe oh. I, we didn't get them, or I I okay. looked right. in vain. So the top, there are no the only the the stair itself does come with a with a, with a railing. Um, it's it's built right into the into the stairway. Right. Um, the, obviously the platform at the top. Typically, we're not we weren't proposing anything on the platform at the top. Um, right, but so I, I, how long is it actually? How is it going to be supported? What is it going to look like? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it seems like the minimum amount of information. Okay, I'm happy to to give you the pro. I have actually a profile sitting on my desk here. Um, Thank you. It'll show the section. I think it's you know the the, the sections itself. I believe it is two. Let me grab the scale here. Yeah, it's the run itself is about forty five feet in length. So more likely it's it's two twenty foot aluminum sections pieced together, and then the end section would be a ten foot or a five foot section that would be removable removable on a seasonal basis. So um, I know. The preference, I think, lately has been to go to the aluminum, so that's why we went with the aluminum. But I'm happy to um, to provide the profile um, as a supplement and come back for the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Mark. Yes. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, Paul, I know on wooden stairs we're required to put landings in. Uh, I don't see one here. Is that not required for aluminum? Forty. Uh, I don't think. For the, for the aluminum staircases, I don't, I don't believe it. I don't believe it is. We typically, um, we've typically gone with the aluminums in this section and been able to do it without the landings. That seems like an odd little loophole in there. Yeah. Oh, I don't know, but that's a, a long, a long run with a couple of cocktails in you. <laughs> <laughs> a long roll, you mean? Um, all right, any other questions or comments from commissioners? Well, you know, gyroscopically controlled uh, plate to hold, you know, to hold them on, no trouble. <laughs> tray, excuse me, gyroscopically controlled tray. Um, so <laughs> Paul, it, it sounded like you were willing to maybe um, come back in two weeks with um, a structural diagram for this one. Sure, I have a profile. Uh, the, it'll be the beach stair profile. Um, and then that'll include this, the stair run and then we'll show that removable section um, down at the end. Yeah, I, th I think that would be great to have um, before we um, approve this one. Yeah, and I thought in like, yeah, I think your preference is the aluminum. So I think from at least from that end, we're on the right path with the track with the aluminum stairs, so. Um, um, okay. Mark. Yeah, I'm wondering if there's a, a code 
uh, either OSHA or town or state on how long the stairs can be without having to have a landing. I mean, that does seem like an awfully long run, Paul, to be yeah. To be honest. I just think it's, it's a long run. I hate to see someone fall down there and tumble down. Yeah. Madam Chair, right. might I break in there to answer Mark's question? Yes, Linda, go ahead. There is a, a state building code of how many treads you can have before you have to have a landing, a stop in between. You can have a run. I think it's more than 16 treads. I can't remember exactly, Paul, but there is a state code. I would check with Paul about that. Yeah, I'll check with Paul Murphy, and um, I appreciate the uh, the uh, the uh, input. All right. So at this point, Paul, um, would you like to continue for two weeks until March twenty fourth? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, so this will continue until March twenty fourth. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and that moves us on to request for determination of applicability. We have Tech Utah. Tech, oh my goodness, Tech Good Man, I can't even pronounce it anymore. Um, nominee Trust at 11 Fulling Mill Road. Um, Jeff, do you want to go through this one? Oh, I could. Or who do we have for this? I'm here. Okay, Art, sorry. That's all right. It's a cutting in. <laughs> it's a cutting in. Thank you. If you look close, it's something backwards. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Um, uh, I'm before you tonight with a request for determination of applicability um, to install a replacement domestic drinking water well, as well as a series of um, uh, wells for a closed loop geothermal system. And um, the work is all proposed outside of the 50 foot buffer zone to uh, bordering vegetated wetlands. Shown in red on the plan are the uh, series of wells and then there is a, um, uh, which are going right along the edge of an existing driveway. It's all either a uh, lawn area or a driveway that we're proposing to work within. And um, there would be a, um, a small subterranean vault that the mechanicals would go inside of. And again, it's a closed, closed loop system. So it's essentially uh, like a large, large radiator, if you will. Thank you, Art. Um, are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Well, that pesky groundwater question, even though as Art is saying, it's a very small um, area in this particular instance. And I'm all for these types of projects, I might add. Uh, so are you asking if it's in, in groundwater? Yeah. Oh, certainly. I think though, yeah, the wells are going down Oh, no, no, the, 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 um, the subterranean vault. Oh, no, 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 no. The, the, the <laughs> vault, I'm, I'm sorry, through you, Madam Chair. No, no, the, the vault is basically like a, uh, uh, a small tank, if you will. Um, gotcha. And the elevation is quite high up at that area of the property. Yeah. So there is more than a two foot separation distance, um, without a doubt, from the bottom of that um, structure to, uh, uh, to groundwater. Thank you, Art. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? If not, uh, Jeff, has, um, have you been out and does staff have a recommendation? Yes, we reviewed it and we would recommend a negative three for allowing for the work in the buffer zone, not requiring a notice of intent. Thank you, Jeff. Mark? So moved. All right, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Linda, so by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Harrisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. I'm not sure she's still here. No, oh, she's here. She's, she's giving, giving it a thumbs up. giving a thumbs up, yeah. So uh, an aye from Maureen uh, Williams. Aye. All right, so that carries unanimously. Uh, Thank you, Art. Thank you. Uh, and that moves us on to minor modifications. We have Garen at 36 Pacamo Road, represented by Brian Madden. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Brian Madden, for the record, representing the Garens. Uh, the proposed uh, minor mod is just a simple uh, deck expansion 
uh, all the works outside the 50 foot buffer zone currently occupied by lawn. Uh, the project, a uh, larger project was approved back over the summer. Uh, no work has started uh, yet. And uh, the deck is gonna be the first phase and it's gonna be uh, constructed um, hopefully this spring. Um, so um, with that, I'll turn over to questions. Thank you, Brian. Are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Looks like no. I'll give a quick check and see if there's any questions from the public. Also looks like no at this point. Um, Jeff, do we have everything we would need to issue the minor mod? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to issue the minor mod? So moved. Um, Ian got you with his hand, Linda, so I'm going to okay. give Ian the motion and you the second. Uh, <laughs> I roll vote Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Eris Manai Golding. Aye. Phillips. Aye. Williams. Aye. All right, that carries unanimously. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Take care. You too. Uh, and that moves us on to certificates of compliance. We have Nantucket Memorial Airport at 96 and 98 Washington Street. Yeah, so if you guys remember, this was the project next to uh, the Great Harbor Yacht Club facility where the airport removed all of those old um, pilings that used to support the pipe that was out there that we had talked about. They were able to remove all of the pilings in their entirety um, and bring those out. So they're all out. Um, honestly, if you go down there today, it really doesn't even look like it ever happened. So it went pretty smoothly and without any problems and we're recommending the issue into that certificate of compliance. Thank you, Jeff. I'm honestly pretty amazed that they got them all out whole, you know, to see them on, on the flatbed truck. They did a great job. Um, so if there aren't any questions or comments, would somebody like to make a motion to issue the cert? So moved. Motion made by Linda, is there a second? Seconded by Seth, so by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Harrisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. Aye. William. Aye. All right, that carries unanimously. Uh, and that moves us on to orders of conditions. Uh, Jeff sent out the draft orders earlier. Uh, and we will begin with uh, McCausland at 10 Smooth Hummocks Way. So this was the one that was our project today for the after the fact construction of beach stairs. So I went back through our notes and called out in the permit overview that it was an after the fact installation of wooden beach stairs. Um, and then just to be clear, I know Seth had asked for it, uh, specific finding that the stairs were originally constructed without the benefit of a permit. Uh, but other than that, I didn't have any conditions. Thank you, Jeff. Um, does anybody have any amendments or any questions? Uh, if not, is there an, a motion to approve as drafted? Uh, Mark, making that motion. Uh, Maureen, are you seconding? Yes. Great. So by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. Aye. Williams. I wasn't present for that one. I came in after that one. Okay. Abstain. So um, that carries with Commissioner Williams abstaining. Uh, thank you. Uh, and that moves us on to 38 Easton Realty Trust at 38 Easton Street. Uh, Mark. Or 30, 38 or 34? 34. I'm, I'm really having a, a rough day reading. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Not going well for me. I would just join the club here. Uh, yeah. um, so so this, this was the residential redevelopment in the new structure on Easton Street, kind of behind the bulkhead um, for the Coastal Bank. So it, it's a new structure. So I included our, our normal fill provision that we've been adding and then included the requirement that 
um, that no coastal engineering structure be permitted to um, protect that on an eroding bank in the future because it's new. I know there's an existing coastal bank there that's um, already a man-made coastal bank, but things change sometimes. Um, so I do have a finding, sorry, I'm kind of jumping around a little bit. My literacy, like Ashley's, is, is fleeting today. So um, a second finding that the coastal bank is established by the existing bulkhead on the site, uh, just to clarify that. And then I've been adding this to a lot of our coastal properties here that should any part of the structure enter the 50-foot setback, the applicant shall come before the commission to discuss the management of the site, including the potential retreat of the structure, just to have that in there as a Per chance, if the shoreline changes, um, they need to come back and talk to you guys about what they should do. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Seth, and then Ian, I'll go to you. Thank you, Madam Chair. To Jeff, if I may. Yep. So if the existing bulkhead that's um, functioning as a coastal bank goes into disrepair or fails somehow is a rebuild of that bulkhead then not allowed? I don't believe so. I, I think they could apply to, to maintain it um, and maintain it in place, but because there's a new structure there now that's not a qualifying structure, I believe they would have to apply and either request waivers or look to some alternative means. Wow. Yeah. It's real. <laughs> um, I think it's. I think it's steel sheathing in front of it too. Yeah, Art looks confused, so we might have to talk about this for a minute. I don't want to get wrinkled faces because there's an existing bulkhead, right? And I think with the structure leaving in a new structure, if that structure were, I think you can maintain the structure that's in place and reconstruct the structure in place. But if you need a new structure, you'd have to qualify it under the existing dwelling. Well, that may I, may I Madam Chair? Um, go ahead, Ian. Yep. Yes. So I'm looking at 103F, and um, I'm not sure to what extent that would hold in this particular instance. But what I would like to make absolutely clear is that it's as a new building, it has absolutely no right to any statutory protection. So from my point of view, reading our regulations, that uh, when the, you know, when the bulkhead disintegrates, it should not be repaired. It, it's, you know, it's there only to protect um, pre-78 buildings. It's not there to protect itself. So I, I and anyway, I'd like that added as specifically as a condition that as a pre seven as a post seventy eight structure, it has no um, claim to protection. Thank you, Ian. I think um, I agree with the train of thought, but I also see that um, depending on when the bulkhead went in, I mean it's a structure that was permitted at a certain time. And those structures would be allowed to be maintained. You know, well, let's see what the let's see what the courts decide. From my perspective, it's strictly there, you know, to protect a, a pre seventy eight structure as it was when it was put in, and it has absolutely no life of its own, independent of its function. So, um, and and I I don't know whether or not this has gone through the courts yet, but. In any way, I just would like it absolutely specified going forward further that it's a, a, as a new building, it is not entitled to any protection, any statutory protection. Thank you, Ian. I, I would agree with that, that that's kind of a um, standard that we should be putting on. Um, yeah. For, yeah. Um, Linda, I see your hand up. Yeah, I don't agree. I agree with the second half of your comment. Um, I was dealing with another bulkhead down there in that strip and it was permitted back before 1900, go figure. And we are allowed to question, you know, arguably maintain it and fix it because it was permitted and it was there. I, 
I have not run into this in any way I've been dealing with where if we put a new structure over there, we can't put a bulkhead or fix the bulkhead that's already there. So it maintains itself and it's just disintegrating. So I, uh, I don't, uh, I question we're not talking over each other. I'm Linda has the floor right now. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not going to agree. And that's just my position until somebody can prove it. Otherwise, maybe it does have to go through the courts, but I'm dealing with one and I dealt with one over on Hulbert Avenue as well. And they were allowed to repair it. And most of the people all the way down Easton street over time have been able to expand or repair their bulkheads or even add a bulkhead because of the rise in sea level, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of mitigating factors, um, but that's that's my position. Yeah, so Linda, I agree partially with what you're saying that I, I think that since the bulkhead was at one time, you know, either before the Wetlands Protection Act and, you know, was put in or after and was permitted, that it can be maintained. However, like extending it, expanding it, um, letting it fall into disrepair and then replacing it I think is where this property would no longer be afforded those protections. So if they are, you know, regularly maintaining in, in good faith, um, I think it would be, you know, allowable, but any alterations to that, any major like repairs needed, if they weren't maintaining it regularly, I think would be subject to, you know, potentially new permits and new designs that might not be a hard bulkhead type structure. Uh, Jeff, I, agree with that. I, I definitely made, made this harder for everyone than necessary by putting this in, but it, it's kind of important to be in there. I just want to be clear. They have the legal ability to maintain that now. Building a new house does not deny them the ability to maintain it in place. So if it needs, you know, repairs and things to do it, I think the provision of the law that's covered in this is kind of what Ashley touched on is if it needed to be extended horizontally or vertically, they would have to apply. And then it may apply differently. I think in the case that, that Ashley's talking about a little bit is there's still an ability that if they're replacing a structure in kind, let's say the whole thing fails and comes back, is they still may be able to grant, get a waiver for a, you know, if it's a 1900 structure, they can apply for it as a, you know, a grandfathered structure through that, that waiver provision, and the commission could rule on it at that time. So it doesn't eliminate that. But if you wanted to say, we just want to raise the top of it by, you know, by three feet vertically, you'd have to apply for, excuse me, a, a waiver or an alternative design that's not a coastal engineering structure. That's what I was trying to get at. Does that make yes. sense to everybody? No, mm -hmm. I, I absolutely do not agree. I'd, I'd like you to ask for a legal opinion. And, um, but going, for, and, and so I think it's absolutely reasonable to add a provision that just says as a post 70, as a new dwelling, it is not entitled to any statutory protection, which is a separate issue from the bulkhead. But I absolutely hold to my case. And in fact, I'm obviously, if I'm asking you through the chair to, to seek a legal opinion on this. But it's a separate issue from what you've drafted here. And I'm very pleased that you have, Jeff. Thank you. Don't get me wrong on this. I can certainly look into that further and get that explained. Uh, You're not you. going to add a provision that says that as a new building, it is not entitled to any statutory protection. Well, it's not up to me. Yeah, so I, I would say I'm happy to put a finding. Three, like my recommendation would be you could simply put a finding that the commission finds that the new structure is a post 1978 structure. And then number 20, what the regulations call for is that no coastal engineering structure of any kind shall be permitted on an eroding bank in the future to protect the project allowed by this permit, except those coastal engineering structures allowed by a waiver issued pursuant to 1.03F of the Nantucket Wetland Protection Regulations. You know, I have to say, if I may, Madam Chair, that's the politest digging in one's heels that I've encountered in some time, so. <laughs> 
Um, I, I think Jeff probably putting the additional finding up there um, and just calling out that it's post 78 might be good in this case based on the discussion. Um, I don't know how uh, other commissioners feel about that. Crickets. Um, so I think Ian probably wants it up there based on what he said. So I guess let's put it up there. Well, you know, if my fellow commissioners don't feel it's appropriate or necessary, I will buy to group wisdom in this. Well, they're not saying anything. So I, I, you know, <laughs> I, I think it's fine to put in, in the findings the house's post 78 structure. I don't think anyone is debating that. It's clearly being built in 2022. Yeah. I personally don't see how that changes um, the condition 20 at all, but if it makes you happy, then you can put it in. It, it, well, it reinforces the point, right? And Ian wants that point reinforced and I think we should do that. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes. All right, so um, Jeff, can you um, add that finding for us? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, any other amendments to this order? And if not, would somebody like to make a motion to approve as amended? Sure. Motion made by Ian. Is there a second? Seconded by Mark. So by roll vote, Beal? Aye. Engelborg? Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Williams? Linda, are you there? I forgot I was muted. Aye. Okay, uh, so that carries unanimously. Uh, thank you, everyone. That was a lively one. Um, so that moves us on to Nantucket Islands Land Bank at 321 Pulpis Road. This one's much more simple. Um, I just included our fill provision because I know they're removing a house and there, there may be things going in. Um, and then I just suggesting the requirement for just some photo monitoring of those restored areas um, after they remove the house and the debris and let buffer zone regrow. Thank you, Jeff. Are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Okay, seeing not, uh, would somebody like to make a motion to approve as drafted? Motion made by Mark. Is there a second? Seconded by Maureen. So by roll vote, Beal? Aye. Engelborg? Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Williams? Linda, are you there? Yeah. Oh, we can hear you. Yeah, I did. I said I. Oh, I couldn't hear that. Um, all right. Quietly, so that I said I. <laughs> um, so that carries unanimously, uh, and that moves us on to Joseph V. Arno Nominee Trust at thirty-one Easy Street. Recused from this. Thank you. This was the, the removal of the schooners building. Um, this is the last one I drafted. Um, Again, I kind of had the same uh, conditions as the last one. And then during the meeting, I added, it's not on your draft, but I've added a condition 21 that uh, I would recommend that says prior to the start of work, the applicant shall provide a demolition protocol, including erosion and sediment controls, dust control and debris management. Thank you, Jeff. Any other kind of Thoughts or amendments for this one? Uh, Seth? Yeah, that protocol, are we gonna review it or is it just gonna come to you, Jeff? And then also, um, is there any way to condition if, you know, like they're having any on-site problems to do a construction pause until additional protocols can be put in place? 
Great question, Seth. Yeah, so they hit all the grease from all the food over the decades. <laughs> oh, that building mm -hmm. has seen a lot. <laughs> sure it has. Uh, I'm, excuse me, um, may I comment? Yep. Um, I would think maybe the, the protocols themselves would cover what, you know, if, if the applicant or, you know, whatever is having, you know, cannot follow the protocol, something shall happen. I mean, I would think there's, there might be something in the protocol itself that covers that. I'm just wondering. So I, I added to the, the 21, Maureen, I, hopefully that uh, deals with it. it. I just added, it's the same thing. So just from the and debris management, um, I added for the commission to review and approve. So that way it'll come back to you guys for review. And that way, if it's not adequate for what's going to happen, if there's a problem, we can certainly add on to it then. Thank you, Jeff. Any other thoughts? Uh, and if not, uh, is there a motion to issue as amended? So moved. Oh, I can't do it. What am I saying? <laughs> not here. The reflex. <laughs> reflex. <laughs> so I'll, I'm happy to, um, to make a motion to approve as amended. Thank you, Ian. So motion made by Ian. Is there a second? Seconded by Seth. So by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Uh, Engelborg. Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. Aye. All right, so that carries with Commissioner Williams recused. Uh, and that is our last um, draft for tonight. Jeff, do you want to? No, I, can yeah, I just, if you want to do them all together and kind of rapid fire, if people have thoughts on uh, 25 Willard Street, which was David Haynes' project, or the Land Council's project, the Yieldgrass Restoration Project. I didn't draft either one of those because um, they take place in resource areas or required waivers. Um, but if people have thoughts on those, I'm happy to take them down. It seemed like in general, people were looking for positive orders. So that was my general assumption. Yeah, I think just with the um, 25 Willard, having that lighting condition in there um, with the wetland right in the backyard and maybe um, I guess a photo monitoring component as far as that revegetation is concerned. I was also kind of thinking of some level of permanent marker along that edge too. Yeah, I think that's kind of a like good normal. Any, Any other thoughts, thoughts on the eelgrass project? It seems I'm pretty straight. Oh, I like it. Go yeah, for it. I think that one's pretty straightforward. So I guess similar to their other uh, project permit. Uh, well, yes, I mentioned on the Willard Street that it was more than, you know, adding more than 25% to the um, habitable dwelling. And as such, even though it's in a flood zone, it wouldn't be entitled to any protection going forward. But I don't know whether my fellow commissioners feel that that's so abstruse as to be um, not worthy of recording. Yeah, I don't know how the how it impacts well, the flood zone, I, I guess. I think the answer, Ian, is I'll have to look at that because most of the time when we talk about how substantially improved works against protection that's related to resource areas like Coastal Bank. Right. which are on the property. I'll, I'll, right. I'll promise I'll take a look at it and have a better answer for you for that since I have to draft it for next time. Um, but my gut feeling off the top of my head is there's not applicable performance standards under land subjects and storm flowage, that that would Thank be you. relevant, but I, I will triple check. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Great. Looks like that's, that's all we have. <laughs> All right, so that moves us on to extension of orders. We have Nantucket Islands Land Bank uh, at 48 South Cambridge Street. I believe they were looking for um, three, three one-year extensions. 
I don't know if Paul wanted to say anything on that, but sure. Um, uh, hi, Paul. Oh, then Seth, I'm within my 30 days. I'm after before my 30 days, so I just wanted to be the first one to get that before Seth starts checking on them all. <laughs> I, I checked is, it. Thank you. <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> <laughs> um, this just a, this is the um, um, uh, 48 South Cambridge is down by Long Pond. Uh, it's a dock project, which is actually we've been through Chapter 91. Um, it, it's being out to bid right now for construction, and um, we just wanted to, you know, protect ourselves with regard to uh, the order of conditions. So, thank you, Paul. Uh, are there any uh, questions about this one? Uh, and if not, would somebody like to make the motion to issue the three one-year extensions? Moved. Uh, motion made by Linda. Is there a second? Seconded by Maureen. So by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. I think you might be a little bit frozen, Maureen. Oh, yes. um, I can hear you now. So um, we're just going through the roll vote for the extension. Right. No, it's, um, I say I. And also, I'm, I'm having a little trouble. So I'm going to leave the meeting briefly to get on my computer. And that'll be better than my phone, I hope. So I'll be right back. OK, thank you, Maureen. Uh, Williams? Mm. All right, so that carries unanimously. Thank you. Um, thank you, Paul. Uh, and that moves us on to other business. We have approval of minutes. We have our last regular meeting on February 24th, uh, and then our um, workshop uh, about the SBPF uh, town compliance on February 17th. Um, so I don't know if anybody saw anything in the minutes they feel uh, needs to be amended. Seth? Thank you, Madam Chair. Regarding the 217 minutes, um, starting on page one and then going into page two, where I talk about the waiting shots, I think the wording needs to be cor uh, corrected a bit there. Um, it's what I meant to say is that that proposal has been brought forth to the commission before and has never been accepted as a change. And um, the assumption that it should be accepted now because the difference um, in the calculation between you know, extrapolating and measuring is so small, I think it's just important to say that you know, that's not been accepted before and it shouldn't be accepted now. Thank you, Seth. Uh, Terry, do you um, kind of understand what he's trying to say there? Um, yeah, I think I got it, but just to be double D, double D sure, um, I've got it in my notes here, but if, Seth, if you would just sort of write that down and then email it to me, my email is on the website and it's T Norton at Nantucket, blah, blah, anyway. Um, just email it to me so that I, I am sure to get it right. And then you can just approve those minutes as amended. Okay. Does it Thank work for you? Yeah, okay. that's fine. That's or you can always email them to me. I can get them right to Terry as well. Yeah, yeah. Either, either way. I mean, whatever's easier for you. But yeah, if it, get, if it comes to me in writing, then I know that in the corrected minutes, it's going to be perfecto. <laughs> Thank you. Totally understandable. Um, any other thoughts on the minutes? Um, so would somebody like to make a motion to approve the February 24th minutes as drafted and the February 27th minutes as amended? Ian? Um, um, I think Ian got you. I, Ian? I actually, um, so I would have to abstain because I wasn't there for the last, for the 27th. So I think, could we split them up? I don't sure. want to abstain from both. 
Sure. Thank so it, it, it's better if they're split up because they're kind of two different motions. Yeah. Okay. One is as drafted, the other is as amended. So, okay. So uh, just do the 24th first. All right. So, so move to approve the 24th as drafted. Perfect. Is it, and seconded by Mark. So by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. Aye. Williams. Aye. Right, that carries unanimously. And then we have the February 17th minutes. I'll move as amended. All right, is there a second? Second. Now seconded by Linda. So by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Erisman, aye. Uh, Golding. Epstein, as I wasn't present. All right. Um, Phillips. Aye. Williams. Aye. All right. So that carries with Commissioner Golding abstaining. Um, and that moves us on to monitoring reports. Uh, we didn't have any monitoring reports. Uh, Jeff, do we have any enforcement actions or potential enforcement actions? Uh, just a quick update. Sorry, we don't have any new ones. Um, from me being away all last week and, and, and such between the last meeting and this one. Uh, but we have met with the property owner from the one we issued last time on Meter Street and are working on getting something to put together for you guys to review, hopefully for the meeting on the 24th. But we had a pretty productive chat about what happened and understands and that work has stopped. Um, and we're gonna figure out what best course of action is there given the state of that site. So hopefully we'll have that to everybody by the 24th. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I will say just to, to the property owner's credit, they were here in my office uh, the day after the meeting um, and we had a pretty good 30 minute chat about the whole thing. So they saw it on the meeting, they watched it. Um, Arcus Barra was a huge help in kind of making that happen. Um, but we had a pretty productive talk and hopefully we'll have something good to put together here shortly to get that site back on track. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, and thank you to the property owner for being so responsive because really some drag it out for years. So this is positive. Um, so that moves us on to reports. We have crack. Uh, no. Nothing to report. CPC. Nothing to report. Uh, NP and EDC. Nothing to report. Okay. Uh, so that moves us on to commissioner's comments. Uh, any commissioner's comments out there? Another well run reading, Madam Chairman. Oh, thank you. I think I, I, I've struggled the whole way through, but I appreciate that. <laughs> we, don't, uh, we don't comment on people's ability to read numbers. Yes, that's true. I, I, I had trouble reading words earlier on too, but it, it, it happens. Uh, Mark? Interesting reading with the uh, recent MOA that was sent around from the uh, Selectman and SBPF. Read it. It's interesting reading. It is, it is interesting. I've read it the minute I got it. Yeah, I tried to skim it, but not enough moments in, in the day to, to get it all in thoroughly. So uh, I still need to look at that more thoroughly. Jeff? <laughs> yeah, to that, I was just going to comment. I know we sent that around for everyone to take a look at and town manager requested for comments. Seth asked how to do that. If you guys have comments, please email to those to me. Um, I'll compile those and get those obviously to the select board. Um, and I'll circulate those for everybody to see what everyone's comments were as well. Should um, we put this on the next agenda? Uh, yep, to and we can add it to our, our next agenda in open session to, to talk about. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Um, I know um, Ian and Jeff and I attended the uh, Coastal Resiliency Workshop on Monday and Tuesday. Um, so I you survived. Do, it's better than a teacher PD, I got to tell you. <laughs> they provided lunch and coffee all day. I mean, <laughs> that's like... <laughs> Lovely <laughs> setting, yes. Yeah, um, but I... I did find that it was, you know, very informative and good to get um, many different facets of the town and some other groups together to really, you know, brainstorm how to move the town forward and its resiliency. So, um, you know, I found that beneficial. 
Um, and if there's no other commissioner's comments, we'll move on to administrator staff reports. I was just gonna mention what you did. So thanks to Ashley Nian for being able to go um, and participate. I know I had the unfortunate pleasure of sitting next to Ian for, for two days. <laughs> so we had a lot of time together to talk about a lot of these things, but I really felt like uh, the group as a whole, I mean, I wish I would have sent one more uh, more time with with the, the other group that Ashley was in because we were separate for most of the time because I felt like there was good ideas, but I really felt like both groups as a whole came very open-minded and presented things pretty openly. And I don't think people were, you know, trying to push agendas or doing anything really crazy. So I, I, I thought it was a really productive conversation and hopefully uh, the results of that make it out for the public and hopefully some of those things can start to happen and get into a greater discussion and we can all make good progress. Yeah, I agree. And I would second what Jeff and, and uh, Ashley said. I found it um, very productive, very interesting, and everybody was um, obviously on the same page. Uh, and the exercises that were provided by Arcadis, I thought were, um, you know, expanded my knowledge on the subject. So it was very helpful. It was an interesting two days. I'm going to be building crazy eights into our future meetings, by the way. Those two will get that joke, but. Oh, my well, students will be having that in, in some lesson plans in the future, I can assure you. <laughs> nothing like drawing pictures to get everybody in. Yep. But that's Here, it for let, me. Let, me, let me show you one. I don't know if I can show you, quickly show you one. Um, yeah, here we go. Nope. Uh, you can't really see it, can you? Yeah. We can't really. Yeah, if you it. email it to me, I'll send it okay. around. Everybody. All right. Absolutely. So. Oh. <laughs> now, <laughs> now I'm wondering what we're talking about. Um, right. All right. So that moves us on to our executive session. So um, I'm just going to read the purpose of this. Um, so the purpose is to discuss strategy with respect to litigation with regard to Sconset Beach Preservation Fund, geotextile to Project Removal Order, SBPF versus Nantucket Conservation Commission, where an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigation position of the Conservation Commission. Uh, so somebody needs to make a motion uh, to have us enter into executive session for the purpose outlined in the agenda um, with the intention not to come back into open session. So moved. Motion made by Linda, is there a second? Seconded by Maureen. So by roll vote, Beal. Aye. Engelborg. Aye. Erisman, aye. Golding. Aye. Phillips. Aye. Williams. Aye. All right, so uh, that will move us into executive session. I know Jeff usually needs a couple minutes to just turn over, um, but we'll see you in the next meeting. I'll be fast. Kidoki. Okay, okay.